Welcome to the first lecture of Blogpad Open Class. Today we will talk about a brief history of the internet. I am Zhong Xingming. Back to 1969, which is an epoch-making year in human history. In this year, Neil Armstrong started his capture of humans marching to the universe. In the same year, the internet was born, which opened a new space for humans, the cyberspace. For a long time, people used circuit switching for telecommunication. It is a centralized system that is not reliable to local failures. If parts of the circuit is not available, you always get busy signals. The internet was invented to provide a more reliable and scalable communication system. It was built in a decentralized manner with the idea that as long as there is an arbitrary route between the source and the destination. The communication can happen even if some part of the network is is destroyed. The first implementation of the internet was called ARPANET. It was built by DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency of the United States. The first version of ARPANET went online with four nodes, which was connection of computers at UCLA, Stanford, UCSB, and the University of Utah. For the next 50 years, the internet has evolved significantly with the development of computing technology, from mainstream computing to personal computing to mobile internet. Now, it has become a network of global interconnected computing units. Everyone is using the internet, and we might can't live without the internet. Since it's born. The internet has grown dramatically, from connect of four university nodes to billions of users. Today, about 87% of the planet is on the internet. So back to the beginning, what is the internet? Do we really understand what it is? There are most, there are multiple answers to this question. Here, I want to quote the answer from the father of TCP/IP. That is, the internet is the largest network of networks in the world. It uses TCP/IP protocols and runs on any communication substrate. For the past 50 years, the internet has been on a mission to make the world more open and connected. For us, that means the entire world. We have made good progress. And today, we connect more than six billion people through the internet each month. In the 1960s and the 1970s, when the core ideas underlying the internet was developed, telephony was the only example of successful, effective, and global-scale communications. Thus, while the communication solution offered by TCP/IP was unique and groundbreaking. The problem it solved was telephonies, a point-to-point -point conversation between two entities. However, IP has exceeded all expectations for facilitating ubiquitous interconnectivity, and the world has changed dramatically since then. Information incentive business like travel, banks, and financial services long ago moved onto the internet. Almost anything is available online as the internet becomes the world's storefront. The web has made it easy for anyone to create, discover, and consume content. With the result that gigabytes of new contents are produced every month. Great success comes from standing on the shoulder of giants. Here I list some of the names of the internet pioneers. If you are interested in their stories, you can Google their names and find out how they contributed to the Internet Society. Innovation is the genome of the Internet. The Internet keeps evolving since it was born. Here are some examples, like the Ibland Network in America and the Asia Pacific Advanced Network by the collaboration of China. America, Europe, and other countries. And our vision 
is that in the near future, almost all the electronic devices will be connected to the internet, like the smart, smart healthcare, smart traffic, smart home, and we will be embracing a world with billions of connected devices and a huge market of the internet. However, the reality is not so wonderful. Here are some examples of the internet disasters. Like from the left side, it is a automatic driving car because of the network failure of transmission of the navigation information. It was a huge disaster in Europe. And the middle figure was the missile defense system of America. Because of the network failure to transmit the control information, during the past several years, there were three times of failures was due to the network failure. And the right side where the trap jam happened because of network failure of the automatic controlling system of the smart traffic. So because uh, the uh, network was uh, influenced by some bad people, there was a huge trap jam happened in America. And the number of security incidents increases explosively during the past 20 years. You can see from the left side to the right side, there are a huge number of increase of the security incidents. And it is only the number of by the year of 2003. If we count the number of recent years, like 2017 and 18, it, the number will be much bigger. And the problem of cybersecurity has attracted the attention of each country. The Obama government launched cybersecurity initiative with many countries followed similar acts in the world like in China, like in Russia, like in the Europe, many countries are now making a lot of efforts to protect the, uh, the cyber security. But uh, those uh, activities or initiatives uh, do not fundamentally solve the problem because the requirement of the internet and the infrastructure level has changed significantly since it was born. About 50 years ago, when the internet was born, it is shown in the figure that uh, it was generally used for military purpose. At that time, uh, it was used to connect the military command post to reliably transmit the uh, command information. However, the internet now is used mainly by uh, normal people to enjoy their uh, daily life, like uh, seeing movies in YouTube, uh, listening to uh, music, and showing pictures to the public, or to uh, do some uh, conversation where the social media. And because the internet was designed for the military purpose, it, was not, it is not suitable for the current requirements of our daily lives. That's why we are facing a lot of uh, uh, failures or accidents, and the internet security is very dangerous because at that time, about 50 years ago, it was not considered to be secure at the network level. The future of the internet is threatened by frail connectivity, poor scalability, absent trust, cracked security, and broken business model. A lot of efforts have been made to reconstruct the internet architecture. But how we should involve the internet still remains an open issue. But the internet community believe that we should not, should not accept a fully centralized governance. We do not accept kings, presence, and voting. 
but we are believing in rough consensus and running code. How we should design the details of the future internet architecture is still under discussion. But the internet community and block out are making their efforts to move towards that direction. According to the history of the internet, there were significant technology innovations in each couple of years. And each such innovation led the industry, or even the human society, into a new era. We cannot predict the future, but many people believe that blockchain technology might lead the internet industry to the next step. We will open the eye on it and see what happens in the coming couple of years. The innovation of the internet never stops and opportunities especially favor the young. The last blossoming cycle of the internet has come to an end, but the new trend has just begun. We see that the younger generation has just started embracing the future. If you are interested in internet technologies and innovations, it is the best time to join. This concludes our first lecture. Here at least some references. The slides will be put to public and you can find the references if you are interested in further reading. Thank you for coming to Block Cloud Open Class. I'm Zhong Xinming. See you next time.